Electromagnetic Induction Part 1. Um, we're going to start out, we're going to think about a metal bar that's moving through a magnetic field. So let me draw the situation first, and then we'll discuss it. So we have this metal bar oriented up and down, and it's moving through a magnetic field, and let, let's just make the magnetic field into the page. We're going to drag the bar to the right, and maybe it's because the bar is attached to some strings, Maybe you grab it and you start dragging it to the right. Whatever. We don't know why. But the bar moves to the right through this magnetic field. If that's the case, this metal bar, because it's a conductor, it has charges that are free to move. The negative charges in this bar, as they move through the magnetic field, even though they're inside of a bar, they are still charges moving through a magnetic field charges moving through a magnetic field will feel a force. And these negative charges, the ones that are free to move, they're going to feel a force towards the bottom of the page. So, if there's a force on these charges towards the bottom of the page, they will begin to move toward the bottom of the page, toward the bottom of the bar. Eventually, enough of them will be moved towards the bottom of the bar that they will also be a net positive charge left at the top of the bar. These charges will distribute themselves so that there is a net negative charge at the bottom, a net positive charge at the top, and there will be an electric field within the bar that balances out the magnetic forces. The bar, in other words, is going to reach equilibrium. The charges inside of the bar will reach equilibrium. But now, we have a net negative charge at the bottom, a net positive charge at the bottom. That looks an awful lot like something else that we've seen before. It looks like a battery. And in fact, because there's more positive charge at the top and more negative charge at the bottom, there's a potential difference across this bar now. Just because we've dragged it through a magnetic field, this bar has an EMF, a potential difference across it. That's interesting, because just by dragging the bar through there, we've, creating so we've created something that's analogous to a battery. Pretty crazy. And it's all because of the mag magnetic force acting on charges, on moving charges. Now, we can also derive the magnitude of this EMF. And we'll go through that. Um, now, I said that eventually these charges will reach an equilibrium. And when they reach equilibrium, the magnetic force should be balanced by the electric force. So Fb should equal Fe. So there's got to be as much elect magnetic force as electric force. So QVB sine theta has to equal Q times E. Now, in this case, V is perpendicular to B, so theta is 90 degrees. So we have QVB equals Q times Z. The Qs cancel out. We get VB equals E, or we could write that as E equals VB. All right, now let's think about the potential difference. If we have a distribution of charge, the potential difference is equal to the electric field times the distance between the charges. And we saw this before when we looked at parallel plates. So if we have that, uh, the potential difference is equal to E times the length of the bar. We can use the previous equation, E equals VB, to substitute for E, and then we get that the potential difference is equal to VBL. Now that potential difference, we can give it, this, give, it, give it the moniker EMF. Instead of calling it a potential difference, let's call it an EMF. Then the EMF is equal to BLV. Sometimes it's given as VLB or whatever order you want to put the letters in, but it's the magnetic field times the length of the bar times the velocity of the bar through the magnetic field. That's equal to the EMF. Now we're going to think of the case where the bar is attached to two rails, and then those rails are connected by a resistor, like the diagram that I'm drawing right now. In this case, when you drag that bar along the rails, you've created a circuit. There is a circuit right there. And as the bar moves, it creates an EMF across the two ends. And it's equivalent to having 
an EMF produced by a regular old battery with two wires connected by a resistor. It's equivalent to a simple circuit. Now if we had the simple circuit, a current would flow from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. In the case of the moving bar, we also get a current, and the current moves from one side of the bar towards the other side of the bar and then through the bar. Okay, so interesting. We can uh, move a bar through a magnetic field and we generate an EMF, just like a battery. There's something else to consider though. If we have this bar moving through a magnetic field, and if there's a current through this bar, now we have a current through a magnetic field. And we know that a current through a magnetic field will experience a force. So let's figure out what the direction of that force would be. So the current in the bar, the way that we've drawn this, the current in the bar is going from the bottom of the bar to the top of the bar. Okay. We also know that the magnetic field points into the page. So if we use the right hand rule, point our fingers in the direction of the current through the bar, point our palm in the direction of the magnetic field, then our thumb will point in the direction of the force on that bar. And the force on the bar is opposing the motion. Now that's important. We're dragging a bar across the rails and it generates an EMF. So that right there, it sounds like we've got something for nothing. Because the bar is just moving along and generating an EMF. That's like we're getting energy. If, if this resistor or a light bulb, then we would be getting that light bulb to light up for free. We're not putting any energy in, into it, so it's just lighting up. But that's not the case. In fact, the bar experiences a magnetic force that acts to stop the bar. So we have to supply a continuous pull on that bar in order for current to flow, in order for that resistor to have any current through it, or for that light bulb to light. So we're not actually getting something for nothing. So let's try an example. Uh, let's have the setup with the bar running on the rails, and we'll have a resistor connecting the two rails at one end. But we're going to have a magnetic field coming out of the page. Okay. Now let's say the bar moves at a constant velocity to the right, equal to 2 meters per second. Let's say the length of the bar between the two rails is 0 0.825 meters. Let's say the magnitude of the magnetic field is 0 0.200 Tesla. And let's say the resistor is a resistor of 5 ohms. First thing we'll do, let's, uh, let's find the EMF that's generated in the rod. So that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The EMF is equal to VLB, or BLV, or whatever order you want to put that in there. So we can solve that and get 0 0.33 volts. Okay, let's find the direction um, and the magnitude of the current. So let's see, figure out the direction of the current. Well, to figure out the direction, let's think about where the positive charges in the bar will go. The positive charges in the bar. We use our right hand rule. Point your fingers in the direction of the velocity, point your palm in the direction of the magnetic field. A positive charge would heal force towards the bottom of the bar. The positive charges go down there, the negative charges would go in the opposite direction. They would go towards the top of the bar. So, this bar has an EMF such that there's a positive charges at the bottom, negative charges at the top. So, if we think about that as our battery, as like a battery, the current will flow from the positive towards the negative. So it'll flow in a counter, uh, excuse me, a clockwise fashion. Now the magnitude of the current, well we can find that using Ohm's law. So it's equal to 0.33 volts divided by 5 ohms or 0 0.066 amps. All right. Now let's find the power that's used by this light bulb. So we've got a power equation, P equals IV. It's pretty straightforward. We know the current through the bulb, that's 0 0.066 amps. We know the voltage across the bulb, that's equal to the EMF supplied by the bar, which is 0 0.33 volts. So the power 
used by the light bulb, P equals IV, we get 0 0.0218 watts. Okay. Now the energy used by the bulb in 30 seconds, let's try to figure that out. Well, we have the power at this point. Power is related to energy uh, through time. P is equal to energy divided by time. The power used is equal to the energy used divided by time. So, if we do that, we get an energy equal to 0 0.654 joules. E, the force on the rod due to the current, because we have this current flowing through the bar, through the rod, and it's in a magnetic field, so it will definitely feel a magnetic force. So we use F is equal to ILB sine theta. We know the current, we know the length, we know the magnetic field, the angle between the length of the bar or excuse me, the angle between the current and the magnetic field is 90 degrees, so we get a force equal to 0 0.0109 newtons. And the direction of that force can be determined using the right-hand rule. If we point our fingers in the direction of the current, point our palm in the direction of the magnetic field, our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic force. Okay. Now, what's the work done by the applied force over 30 seconds. Well, let's think about that. What's the applied force? How could we figure that out? Well, the applied force must be what's acting on the rod in order to keep it moving. We know one force acting on the rod. There's a magnetic force, but it's acting in the direction opposite the velocity. So that magnetic force, if it were the only thing acting on it, it would slow this rod down, and then it would stop, and then the problem would end. So there has to be an applied force acting in the opposite direction. And if it continues moving at a constant velocity, constant velocity implies zero acceleration and zero net force. That also means that the forces are in balance. So if this is moving along at a constant velocity, the forces are in balance, and the applied force must be equal in magnitude to the magnetic force on the bar. So. The magnetic force had a magnitude of 0 0.0109 newtons. The applied force balances that out, so it must have the exact same magnitude. Okay. We want another work. Well, work is equal to F, the force applied, times the displacement in the direction of the force, times the cosine of the angle between those two things. Work is equal to Fs cosine theta. Well, we know the f applied force now. The displacement. How could we figure out the displacement of the bar in 30 seconds? Well, we know it's velocity. We know 30 seconds pass. We can find the displacement. The displacement is equal to the velocity times the time. Or velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. However you want to think about it. Either way, the displacement is 60 meters. Now, the angle between the force and the displacement is 0 degrees. The force and the displacement, the applied force and the displacement, are parallel to each other. They're in the same direction. So theta is equal to zero. So if we work out, or if we figure out what the work is, it's equal to 0 0.654 joules. That should look familiar, because the work that was done is equal to the energy that was used by the bulb. Now, why would that be? Why is the work done by the applied force equal to the energy used by the bulb? Well, the work done by the applied force, that, that applied force is putting energy into the system. If we imagine you pulling this bar across the page, you're putting energy into the system. You're doing work. You're transferring energy to the system. The energy shows up as light in the light bulb, or the energy used by the light bulb. You're putting energy in by dragging the bar across, so you're putting in mechanical energy. It's being converted to electrical energy, because there's current flowing, and then that is being converted into radiant energy, light energy, whatever you want to call it. And next up, we will think about magnetic flux, but that's all for now.